It looks like your familiar, peaceful Australian billabong. But just under the surface, you'll find a world of death and destruction, sex and intrigue, if only you look closely enough. It's a world of microscopic plants, single cells, each one only thousandths of a millimetre big. Humans have 10 trillion trillion cells to do what these plants do with just one. Gobbling and rejecting food, mooching about and having rabbit sex. These pictures of living single cells wouldn't be possible if it weren't for a botanist with a mission. 20 years ago he wanted to study cell division to see how chromosomes of one cell group then separate to make two cells. But he saw far more. It became obvious as time went by that in the process of doing this we were seeing things that most people never see, even biologists have never seen uh, before and it became imperative to try recording these, these things we were seeing. Uh, a lot of the things were accidental. I mean, we, we, would, we would spend a lot of time studying cell division, but the urge to study pond water is <laughs> to a biologist is always irresistible, so we'd stick samples in, and um, we, we'd see organisms that we were unfamiliar with, and we'd gradually learn about them. Occasionally, we'd see big dramas going on, um, organisms catching and eating other cells, that sort of thing. Some one-celled plants are passive in their eating, but others are ingenious, lassoing in their prey, sucking it in and reeling it in. And some act with eerie familiarity. I have another sequence uh, of a little protozoan like called, called collapse, and we accidentally squashed a big organism on the, on, while we were making the preparation up and after we finished filming some stuff I went back and all of these little collapse they reminded me of one of Attenborough's movies in, the, in Africa where all these little cells darting in and grabbing lumps of this squashed organism and pushing each other aside and they, they reminded me of just like a pack of hyenas attacking a dead organism. But getting pictures like these of living cells takes a bit of black magic. This is how cells normally look when they're photographed, dead. That's because they're killed by the chemicals used to stain them and the lights needed to see them. But Jeremy's cells live because he added an automatic permanent shutter. It gives enough light for photography, but in bursts the cells can stand. You have to invest a great deal of pretty dedicated effort into it and also the belief, the real gut belief that you can do it because a lot of the time it seems like it's impossible. The cells just simply won't cooperate, they die. You know, this, it's so technologically difficult and yet in my experience if you persevere it's amazing how much you can record. But to keep cells alive even longer, long enough for them to have sex, for instance, they needed a lot more nurturing. So Jeremy and his team tried everything. They kept the cells cool and they heated them up. They studied them from every angle and eventually it paid off. One way of getting students' attention uh, is to point out that the behaviour of single cells is, in some respects, not altogether different to their own. And, um, for example, in sexual reproduction in Chlamydomonas, 
um, where all the uh, organisms are primed for sexual, uh, sexual reproduction, and the first thing they do is cluster together in big groups, and they all make contact with their flagella. I, I always describe this as the cocktail party stage, when everybody's getting together and sorting out what's going on. And fairly soon, there becomes a process of pairing off, which I think we're all familiar with, <laughs> the, cocktail, the late cocktail party stage. And anyway, the female cells emit very powerful chemoattractants, Chanel number no. 5, as I always like to say, but it has a very, very powerful effect on the males, and they all race over and get frantically excited. Of course, in 20 years, both microscopes and video technology improved, so Jeremy was finally able to capture his precious cells dividing. But now you'll see the moment of magic comes when they're all lined up in the middle here because then they separate into two groups. Now, there they go, they're separating into two groups and now the cell is dividing between them. And this process is occurring right now in your own body. You probably have anything up to 200 million or 500 million cells actually undergoing that, this process. And the cells do it right every time. More amazingly, cells do just about everything right every time. Like this green alga from Kakadu, newly divided and rebuilding its outside wall exactly. Or these scale cells of a goldfish, pulsing pigment. Or these packages of food being rushed along the freeways within the cell to their proper destination. Or these cells shooting poisonous spears at enemies. These images are unique. Only one other group in the world can take them. They are invaluable. They mean scientists can study directly how normal living cells work. It will give them clues about what can go wrong, like cancer, and how to fix it. And that's good news for us, since we are just a big collection of cells.